So I think we can all agree 2024 is off to a great start. Sarcasm. Hello and welcome back. My name is Miranda and this is From Fluffy to Foxy. Well, it's the end of January and I'm super excited that it fell on a Wednesday because that means it's video day. And I've got all of the measurements and data for you. I am very sorry that it's taken a week and a half before I put up another video. I unfortunately had a family emergency. These things happen. And unfortunately, I was unable to video for the last week and a half. And because of that, some things uh, happen in this video that uh, I actually foresaw uh, happening because of some sort of choices that I made. And we'll cover that off in today's video. But let's get into the video and uh, discuss how the end of the month went. So let's get right into the measurements and the data because it went exactly how I thought it was going to be. So here is the end of month information. I've got the scale information up here for the measurements. Now remember, I am using Renfu scale and measuring tape for this data so that I have it all in one place. You don't have to do that. You can use pen and paper, regular scale. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you want to track, you don't want to track. That's completely your choice. I am data oriented, so I definitely like to keep the data and I like to keep it all in one place. So it's in an app on my phone so I don't lose it because I've got ADHD and I tend to lose everything. <laughs> so you'll see the information from the scale on the left and right. And we've got the information here for the trend for the last week. And as you can see, the trend for my weight and my BMI clearly went up because as you can see, I am now 265.8 pounds. So I went up a little over three pounds. And that's because I was eating a lot of fast food during the time when I had this family emergency. So that is unfortunate, but I expected that just because of my eating habits. They were really garbage during this last uh, week and a half. So I expected to see a gain on the scale. I've got here the monthly scale information for the trend, and you'll see that it went down at the beginning of the month and then slowly started to creep up until the last week where it just spiked right up in that uh, since the 21st. So that's where the emergency happened and the garbage eating started. So completely within what I thought was going to happen at the end there, where it just jumped right up because it just wasn't on task with the eating and went completely right off the deep end there. And here is the information for my measurements on the left is the measurements from last month. And then on the right are the measurements from this month. So again, expected exactly what we see here. So no real surprises based on the information that's, uh, that's showing. So correlation exactly as I saw was going to happen. The last few, like week and a half, I ate garbage and therefore there was garbage showing on the scale. And to be honest, why did I choose fast food over making my meals at home? Is fast food any faster than actually making a meal at home? When you count going to the restaurant, standing in line or in the drive-thru and then driving home? Not really. Is it any healthier? Definitely not, as you can see from the weight gain on the scale. Is it less expensive than making meals at home? Not anymore. In this economy anyway, it used to be you could go to a fast food restaurant and get meals for $6, maybe 7 Now, I can't get a fast food combo for under $14. It only isn't any cheaper than making meals at home. So why did I choose fast food over going home and making food on my own? I think we all know the answer to this. I was stressed and I was lazy, so I chose to go to the drive-thru and pick up my food rather than going home and making a meal for myself and my family. So what have I learned from all of this? Personally, I'm not one that likes to have ready-to-go meals in the freezer. I like to make my meals that day. 
So I like to ingredient prep so that the meals, I have choices of what I want. So if I have taco meat ready, I can do tacos or I can do a taco salad or maybe nachos. Like I have choice so I'm not hamstring into one specific meal and therefore I've got options. So I've never been one to like make ahead a specific meal for a specific day. However, that being said, I see the need to potentially have some frozen meals that can be popped into the oven that are on hand for such an occasion when something may come up that I don't have control over and therefore a healthy pop-in meal into the oven that can take, you know, 30 or 45 minutes in the oven that I don't have to keep my eye on definitely is something that I may have to start making from scratch and then keeping in the freezer for later just in case something like this were to come up again. Definitely not an emergency. I would definitely not want one of those to happen again. But in case something were to come up last minute, I know that there's something healthy in my freezer or some things healthy in my freezer that I can just grab, stick in a preheated oven, know that it's going to cook up and be done with. Or if something were to come up last minute uh, and I know that morning or the night before, I could maybe dump into a crock pot or something like that. And I know that there's going to be a healthy meal prepared that night for dinner and I'm not going to have to worry about or rely on is uh, am I going to have something healthy or am I going to fall back on going for fast food options and to help me with that I am going to do a no fast food challenge for next month my entire family is on board with eating absolutely no fast food for the entire month of February and I will be recording the meals that I eat in uh, YouTube shorts for the month of February. So uh, February 1st, I'll record my meals and I'll edit them and then I'll upload the uh, February 1st. That'll play on February 2nd. So it'll always be a day behind. And I'll do that for the entire month of February. So we can see what no uh, fast food for 30 days looks like. And uh, as far as my meals go, and we'll see what the results are going to be during that month on the scale and as for my measurements. So I'm also interested to see what it'll look like as far as my kids and my husband go as well. I'm also curious to see how long my kids will at last before they start asking for a fast food takeout meal. <laughs> my bet, I think they maybe last a week, maybe a week and a half. And to help facilitate this, I'm also going to make a couple from freezer to oven meals that I can have on hand just in case of a last minute event or situation that pops up where I'm going to have to have something like that handy besides my regular meal prep ingredients that I normally have on hand. So comment below if you have any favorites that you like to have on hand for freezer to oven meals or crock pot freezer meals that you enjoy with your family. So if you've been having too much fast food lately, are you embarrassed about how many times you've been going under those golden arches? Subscribe below and join me on a no fast food challenge for this month and lose that dependency on the fast food and the takeout and gain back your independence and determination to become the healthiest person you can be in 2024. So until next time, stay amazing.